cloud gaming as a space in the industry that had stood its ground and refused to be conquered for nearly 20 years. From startups to multinationals, many had tried and failed to capitalize on the promise of a premium gaming experience with a catalog of games, but without the need for expensive hardware. Cloud gaming can be considered in a similar manner to services like Netflix. A game's picture and sound are streamed to a player from a remote computing center. The difference, however, is that movies are a passive experience. If there is a drop in network bandwidth while you are watching a movie, the picture can stutter or appear blocky. It's an annoyance, but it usually resolves itself quite quickly. For a game, that could mean the difference between winning and losing, the loss of immersion, glitches, and the frustration that comes with it. For smooth gameplay, players require every frame at a consistent resolution and on time. But bandwidth is only part of the equation. Unlike movies, gameplay requires input from a player to be transmitted back to the computing center for processing. Latency, also known as lag, is the time this takes and just like the data being sent to a player, the player's input being sent back is time critical. These two factors are what has held the promise of cloud gaming back for nearly two decades. In 2005, a Finnish startup called G Cluster made the first commercial attempt at delivering cloud gaming to players. Their business model was to strike deals with cable TV companies and use their infrastructure and set top boxes. Signing a deal with the Telecommunication Authority of Cyprus, a country whose entire population is less than half of the Perth metropolitan area, their potential audience was limited to say the least. Although G-Cluster would eventually sign deals with a few large game publishers, they were hamstrung by their own business model. Over the course of 15 years, they reached only a handful of countries and at their peak, their potential player base was the same as the 28% growth that Xbox had in the last 12 months. If cloud gaming was to be truly successful, it was going to have to break free of individual communication companies and stand on its own it was going to have to survive the early internet. Although numerous companies tried to deal with the bandwidth and latency issues of the 2010s with algorithms and dedicated hardware, many failed and went bankrupt with their intellectual property snapped up and filed away under future potential. Big players in the technology sector such as Sony, Google and Nvidia made some headway and still have a stake today but have yet to crack the broader global market due to various factors including content, technology, inadequate pricing models and legal issues. In 1998, Microsoft released a technology to its Windows operating systems that allowed users to stream the desktop of one PC to another, and best of all, it was network independent. Third parties wishing to use this remote desktop technology require the patent to be licensed from Microsoft. In 2001, Microsoft released the Xbox gaming console, which included broadband networking and a hard drive to store games. This was a core pillar of its design and a first for console gaming. A year later they would introduce Xbox Live, a subscription service that allowed users to communicate and play network games together. In 2008 Microsoft announced Azure, a cloud computing platform providing services to an expanding network of Microsoft managed computing centers. The more centers they have around the world, the less distance data has to travel, which reduces latency and increases bandwidth. One of their services is virtual machines, emulating hardware through software. Presently, there are only really three major companies providing cloud computing service on a global scale, Microsoft, Google and Amazon, but there are competitors on the horizon. After taking over the Xbox division in 2014, Phil Spencer spearheaded the Xbox Game Pass subscription service. This allowed players to download games from an ever-evolving library curated to appeal to a wide audience. To enter the cloud gaming space, however, they needed to not only remove the need from an Xbox altogether, they needed to be able to use existing technology people already owned. Leaning into years of global R&D, experience and expertise among Microsoft's other divisions, they had everything in place, they just needed a catalyst to bring it all together. 
For years, players had asked to be able to play games from previous obsolete generations on their current consoles. Leveraging Microsoft's virtual machine experience, a group of engineers who wouldn't take no for an answer brought a total of 632 games from the previous two Xbox generations to download and run on players' current consoles. With the success of virtualizing their older Xbox hardware, Phil Spencer greenlit a small team to see if it was possible to not only put them in the cloud, but to go bigger and set the new standard to which others would have to compete. In 2020, Xbox Cloud Gaming was released to the public. The powerful Microsoft Cloud Computing Centers are capable of running not just the older games, but also some of the most intensive games in the Game Pass library for the current console. Included as part of the Game Pass Ultimate subscription with no price increase, Xbox can bring a true cloud gaming experience to 26 countries across five continents from over 140 computing centers around the world to the simplest devices. Competitive and unique selling points. So, let's take a look at the competitive advantages Xbox Cloud Gaming has over its competitors. The first of which is that it allows touchscreen gaming. While some games have the touchscreen layout of the original controller, other games have original button layouts. And there are also some games that use touch controls natively, like Minecraft Dungeons. A Surface Duo shows the buttons on there instead of around the gameplay footage. The Surface Pro can also use gyro compatibility with motion controls. Pretty neat! Audience and Reception Audiences and critics took well to Xbox Cloud Gaming. TechRadar praised it as part of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and they liked the openness of being able to go to different devices all throughout the house. GameSpot was similarly applauding, noting the seamless transitions between platforms and being able to play Batman while on the can. Others say Xbox Cloud Gaming overtakes its rival competitor, Stadia. Critics and audience believe Xbox Cloud Gaming has a good chance to win the video game streaming wars. Hard and soft skills. With Xbox Cloud Gaming, one can stream to any compatible device, and it has the device specs to run them next to flawlessly. Xbox Cloud Gaming has support for multiple types of controllers, like Xbox, of course. Backbone, Ipega, Razer, and even DualShock 4s that are natively on rival console Sony's PlayStation 4. And it helpfully discloses issues with every compatible controller type on the official Xbox support site. Xbox Cloud Gaming connects well to Android devices like phones and throws in touchscreen and motion support. The legal and ethical issues entailed by the implementation of Microsoft Cloud Gaming weren't well documented, but there was one thing in particular we were interested in. Aside from the obvious, like pricing model and infrastructure delivery, would it be a breach of contract for Microsoft to make all Game Pass titles compatible with Microsoft Cloud Gaming? The answer, we found out, is no because in what seems to be an act of foresight, streaming was already included within the bounds of the contracts established with developers and or publishers upon bringing their titles to Game Pass. While you could also argue that too big of a price increase is poor ethics on behalf of Microsoft, they instead opted to go in the opposite direction and make it included in the already established subscription price. The reason Microsoft Cloud Gaming has been so successful is because of its numerous strengths, opportunities, and limited threats from competitors. Microsoft Cloud Gaming is free for all Game Pass Ultimate subscribers, so it launched with an already large consumer base with access to the product. To further improve this accessibility, no console is actually required to stream games, meaning anyone with a phone, computer, or tablet can engage with Microsoft Cloud Gaming. There's also a wide variety of controller support, meaning most won't have to go out and purchase something new if they don't like the touch controls associated with phone screens. The only real issues dragging down Microsoft Cloud Gaming is mostly related to its nature as a streaming platform. The requirement of a strong internet connection has limited Microsoft Cloud Gaming to 26 countries, which is still higher than other services. 
there's no way to convert previously purchased games, digital or physical, meaning you're strictly limited to what is available on Game Pass, which while large, is no doubt upsetting for some people who don't have access to their favorite games on the go. The touch controls have also been cited to be inconsistent, with some games working well and others being inconsistent both in terms of the game feel and the overall button layout. The reason so many people engage with Microsoft Cloud Gaming as opposed to its competitors is because there's nothing quite like it in the market at the moment. While services like PlayStation Now, Amazon Luna and Google Stadia have been around for a few years, none of them have reached the kind of audience that Microsoft Cloud Gaming has for a myriad of reasons, from lacking software libraries to poor connections and limited access for different countries. One thing that Microsoft does have to look out for is Tencent. Tencent is a Chinese technology and entertainment company that's been rapidly expanding over the years. They have something in the pipeline in regards to game streaming, and while it's probably a ways off, Tencent have access to loads of resources that could make their own service a real competitor within the space. Because Microsoft Cloud Gaming is bundled with Game Pass Ultimate, there's low buyer power and not much room for customers to bargain and apply pressure to Microsoft. Because Game Pass is a service with new additions all the time, the value proposition keeps growing as the library expands. Game Pass Ultimate is already ridiculously good value, without the streaming included, and Microsoft Cloud Gaming bolsters it even further. There's an ever-growing list of exclusive intellectual property as Microsoft acquires studios, and a vast number of platforms that Microsoft Cloud Gaming can be accessed on. The biggest reason Microsoft Cloud Gaming still remains on top as other competitors try to move into the space is because of global availability which is tied to the infrastructure informed by Microsoft Azure and virtual machine technology. There's a vast amount of research and resources that need to be put into building a system that works well for cloud streaming. The other big thing is catalog. Much like with television and movie streaming, these services ultimately come down to the content available on their platform. Microsoft has a wide variety of games to access already, with the power to include more as they're released in the future alongside older games released for their previous consoles. Part of the reason there's not much competition and rivalry to Microsoft Cloud Gaming is because of the high user base brought in that were already subscribed to Game Pass Ultimate, and also because of the global reach it has in comparison to what competitors there currently are in the space. On top of that, Microsoft Cloud Gaming as a part of Game Pass Ultimate, which falls into a low cost market with a broad focus, there's an incredibly strong value proposition here, and the size of the market nowadays means there's broad appeal even to people who wouldn't consider themselves gamers, making Microsoft Cloud Gaming one of the most successful game streaming platforms in the space right now, with no signs of slowing down.